The Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, has been talking about the benefits of NAFTA in California. And today, he is meeting with the mayor of L.A., the two of them holding a news conference right now. Let us listen in. Aller prendre une, une marche avec uh, Eric et parler de comment on va continuer à, à, à être des, des leaders. To be leaders on climate change, on immigration and the major challenges that our citizens are facing. This isn't uh, Canadian February, <laughs> don't worry. Not February. <laughs> but we are so excited, um, and I'm personally excited to spend some time with you uh, here in this iconic place. Um, I start my weekends usually in Griffith Park hiking with friends and family, so sharing that tradition or where you see the diversity of our city uh, is something we're so proud to share with you. And I want to thank you for how much time you've spent um, here uh, really connecting with the key industries in California, technology, uh, entertainment. We are tied very closely to Canada. That friendship is critically important to us. You're our third largest investor, foreign direct investor. Um, this is the largest uh, collection of Canadians outside of Canada here in Southern California. We're very proud of that. And it shows why these relationships are so important at a time when we need to have more bridges and more connections, uh, not more divisions. So uh, we're excited to uh, just have a nice hike today uh, before we send the Prime Minister back to Canada on what I know has been a very fruitful visit. And thank you too for meeting at the local level, whether it was with Rahm Emanuel and uh, with our governor and, and here in Los Angeles. We really see those uh, are in some ways the deepest relationships so that we can create and we'll continue that. And in the spirit of NAFTA, brevemente también en español, so we can have three languages. Uh, es un uh, placer a recibir uh, el primer ministro de Canadá, Justin Trudeau, aquí en Los Ángeles, en la ciudad de Los Ángeles. Y uh, uh, es uh, uh, el mejor manera uh, para recibirnos. Uh, él es aquí en el parque de Griffith, um, un icon de Los Ángeles. Y tengo mucho orgullo porque uh, la población más grande de uh, canadienses um, uh, dentro de Canadá está aquí en Los Ángeles y es un parte del lo intercambio entre los tres países de Norteamérica, de Canadá, los Estados Unidos y de México. Y es muy importante estos lazos ahora, especialmente en estos días de palabras de odio, a tener más amistad. And I just said in Spanish that it's very important for us in this moment when there's so much supposed division in the world to re-ensure that there is friendship and strength. And I, for Los Angeles, know that here in the City of Angels, we see friendship as a strength, conflict as a weakness, and we want to continue building that strength together. So thank you. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Un placer. <laughs> we take some questions now. Uh, good morning, uh, Prime Minister Morning Mayor. Jordan morning. Press with the Canadian Press. Uh, Prime Minister, I'd like to ask you about some of the words that uh, you and your Justice Minister have said in regards to the Bushi trial. And I was wondering, and, and we're wondering, are you concerned at all that with your words about the, the verdict, that you're essentially telling Canadians that they should have doubt in the justice system, that they should not trust that justice will be served? First of all, um, I know I speak on behalf of millions of Canadians when uh, I say that our hearts go out to uh, Colton Bushi's family, uh, his mom, Debbie, uh, his friends, uh, and the entire community. I'm not going to comment on the process that led us to this point today, uh, but I am going to say we have come to this point as a country uh, far too many times. Indigenous people across this country are uh, angry, they're heartbroken, uh, and I know Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians alike uh, know that we have to do better. Uh, je veux dire d'abord que uh, je sais que je parle pour des millions de Canadiens Canadians, when I recognized that people are heartbroken because of uh, Colton Bush's family and her, uh, the mother and the uh, indigenous community, it is a situation that unfortunately in Canada we've experienced too often. And I know that we'll have to do better. There is a lot of anger and frustration and uh, sadness in indigenous communities across Canada. And we, re we all so commit to do better. Uh, in regards to, to last night, it seems that the, the, the crash, the crash involved involved in your motorcade is getting a lot more attention than the words from your speech. And I'm curious to, to get your opinion about what does that say to you about, about how much your message about NAFTA is actually resonating in this country? I think uh, the conversations I've had uh, across, uh, across this country over the past few days have been uh, extremely, extremely positive. I think uh, there is uh, an element of 
uh, wow, Canada's our best friend. We sort of knew that. Maybe it's not as breaking news as uh, something else might be, uh, but that emphasis that we uh, we are uh, working together for the betterment of our, our citizens is a message uh, that does uh, continue and uh, and does resonate uh, on uh, on the issue of of the uh, the, the motorcycle uh, uh, accident. Obviously, uh, I've been uh, following up with my uh, my office to ensure uh, that everyone uh, everyone is okay. Uh, I'm uh, I'm going to be making some phone calls uh, a little later, uh, and uh, certainly uh, I uh, am constantly. Uh, privileged to be surrounded by uh, folks who uh, uh, put themselves at risk to uh, to keep uh, keep us all safe, uh, and my thought goes out to uh, to everyone involved. Oh, Nous, nous reconnaissons à quel point le message euh, positif que nous amenons d'amitié entre le... That we're bringing a message of friendship between Canada and the United States is not necessarily big news uh, to everybody because we know that people take for granted, and that is one of the challenges, the friendship and the proximity, as well as the integration of our two countries economically and culturally, and in terms of uh, links between uh, people on both sides. So I continue to talk about that positively, and people do accept that and uh, take that message well across this country. Obviously, concerning the motorcade accident, I was worried about the people who were involved in the accident, and uh, I will be making some phone calls la la later to determine uh, the uh, situation of the people who serve us every day and keep us safe because our police officers deserve our support and our respect for the work they do. Before you ask the question, the speech that the Prime Minister gave last night was exceptionally well received. Uh, we had staff there, I talked to individuals who were there, and the content of it was so critical and so urgent. And um, I know both of our hearts go out to those men and women who protect uh, people in both of our countries. I spoke to the officers last night who were on the motorcade. Uh, the officer who went down has a broken clavicle, but he's going to heal and he's going to be okay. We appreciate really the Prime Minister's um, and his staff's caring for that. but. Uh, don't let that overshadow the importance of what that speech was and just how well, uh, once the breaking news of the day settles down, we know that this is deeply important work that the Prime Minister is doing and we're so pleased he did it here in Southern California. Next question. Hi, I'm Brittany Mejia with the Los Angeles Times. I was curious, Prime Minister, what do you think about President Trump's administration policies on immigration and do you worry that this could drive more immigrants to Canada? One of the uh, focuses we have in Canada is an understanding that uh, immigration is a source of strength. Uh, waves of people have come to our country, to uh, countries around the world for generations uh, and contributed to uh, success, contributed to economic uh, uh, prosperity, committed to, uh, contributed to the resilience uh, and the diversity of our communities in incredibly positive ways. And uh, Canada is uh, a country that is open to immigration because we have a strong immigration system that uh, Canadians uh, rely on. If uh, people come to our country seeking asylum because they're refugees, uh, they will get processed. Uh, at the same time, uh, Canadians know that, that having a strong process where we uh, ensure security, ensure that people coming are going to be able to be successful, uh, is integral to keeping a strong system. So that's uh, continuing to be my message uh, on immigration, that uh, we are an open and welcoming country because it's, uh, it's our strength, but we ensure that uh, that welcoming happens uh, through uh, a process that leads people to succeeding. Amen. Bonjour, uh, Raphael <laughs> Bouvier-Auclair de, de Radio-Canada. À propos des hélicoptères et des Philippines, pourquoi... Talking about the helicopters and uh, the Philippines, why did your government wait for the uh, for President Duterte to get the contract if there was a human rights concern. Well, we're always watching uh, commitments and uh, transactions made by Canada with anybody uh, concerning military hardware that could be used uh, for military purposes. As we said, we will ensure that we respect the principles and values of Canadians in all transactions of that nature. So we indeed monitoring because some statements were made by the Philippines that we did not exactly align with, uh, align with what they said initially when the contract was launched. So this is a situation we'll be monitoring and uh, we're trying to investigate that situation. Canada is committed to ensuring that 
equipment that we sell, sell around, around the world, whether it be military or uh, possible military use, uh, is uh, properly framed so that we can ensure that it's being used for the right things and not the wrong things. That's a, a value and, a, and, a, and a, an element that's extremely important for Canada and for Canadians in, uh, in international trade. Uh, the statements that have uh, been coming out of the Philippines on the uh, potential or uh, possible uses of those helicopters have uh, given us cause to need to follow up on that, and that's exactly what we're doing. On est en Californie, uh, legalisation de la marijuana. And the legalization of marijuana. There are places and where the legislation has gone even further. For instance, in San Francisco, they've decided to amnesty those who had, uh, who had been uh, sentenced in the past for consuming marijuana. Why wouldn't you do that in Canada? Well, in Canada, we'll ensure that we have a system that controls and regulates marijuana rigorously to protect our youth and better protect our communities and uh, reduce the uh, exorbitant profit that uh, organized crime w was making each year from the sale of marijuana. As I said, until the legislation changes, we will not be looking at the issue of uh, pardons and uh, former convictions. But as I said, after, the, after that, we will start that process. As uh, I've said a number of times, we are moving forward on uh, responsible legislation to control and regulate the sale of marijuana uh, with a, 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 an explicit goal and purpose of protecting our kids better so that it's harder for them to purchase marijuana. Uh, protecting our communities better and ensuring that the incredible profits that organized crime and street gangs make from the sale of marijuana every year in Canada uh, is reduced. That's our approach on this. Until we actually change the laws, uh, the existing laws uh, remain in place. But as I've said, uh, after we change the law, we will then look at uh, steps forward on how we move on, on pardons and uh, retroactive measures. Colin Milton, NBC, Los Angeles, uh, the Prime Minister or Mayor, if you wouldn't weigh in on this as well. There's a perception I think a lot of people have that with the America First attitude out of Washington, the heads of state see a greater value in, uh, for lack of a better term, a workaround, talking to governors and mayors uh, where there's greater commonality perhaps than what you're seeing out of Washington. Uh, not only do you uh, have the conversations about trade, et cetera, but also you can meet people who potentially will be running for uh, national office. Is that part of what this trip is all about to Illinois and California? Uh, one of the great things about the Canada-U.S. relationship is it's always been uh, incredibly deep. I mean, our gov uh, your governor premiers, uh, our mayors and your mayors have always uh, connected with each other and uh, the federal government and the prime minister is always engaged with uh, leaders from congressional leaders to uh, to uh, people in the administration to a broad range of, of actors within the economy as well. As well. So, so we're always, we're always going, going to continue to engage in a lot of different ways. I think people have noticed that I, uh, I continue to engage uh, regularly and constructively with President Trump as well. Uh, there's things we don't agree on, but there's a lot we do agree on as well, and looking for common ground and trying to build uh, shared prosperity here in North America is something that we uh, agree very much on. Working uh, together to ensure that the middle class does better in both of our countries is a, a goal that both of us got elected on. Obviously, there's points of difference, but the way Canada engages with the United States uh, continues to be at all the levels that the relationship has always been. Uh, and I'm very pleased to be able to, to meet with mayors and governors as, uh, as I have in the past uh, under the previous administration as well. Uh, le, 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 le Canada, uh, at, uh, uh, Canada has always had the advantage of having a connections with the United States at all levels, be it with governors or mayors or with different corporations. The connections between our two countries are much deeper than those between the uh, president and uh, the prime minister. Obviously, I uh, constantly engage with the uh, president on issues that we may agree with on or not, but we will continue to remain engaged with different levels of government, with uh, governors and mayors. This is a way of uh, 
emphasizing the links that are not only uh, restricted to the top between Canada and the United States, but at all levels, and we'll stay on that path. Look, we have, have a, a depth of the relationship that the Prime Minister mentioned. Here in Los Angeles, I said, the largest collection of, of Canadians outside of, of Canada. Uh, $1.5 billion in foreign direct investment. $1.2 billion in real estate investments. Uh, these are creating thousands of jobs here. Canadian companies, Bombardier, uh, just won the contract to finally get uh, rail into our airport. Um, I don't know if you knew that, but it's a good announcement for us. It literally happened this past week. Um, and, you know, we can talk about the fights, but we're a family. Canada and Mexico are our two closest friends and most important trading partners, uh, security partners, and that is what we should be emphasizing. At the sub-national level, we always have a ton of respect for whoever is at the national level and those conversations that they must engage in. But, for instance, when our White House, our president, withdraws from the Paris Climate Accords, we will lead the way. And with Canadian cities and others, make those sorts of agreements to enact them here in Los Angeles and now 390 other cities. Uh, we have trade policies uh, here in the port of Los Angeles where 43 percent of our goods come into America. And much of that is Canadian goods and vice versa to Canada. It is very important for us, whether it's the film industry, whether it's looking at tech investment, to make sure that we're having those conversations, which no matter who's in the White House, really comes down to people-to-people -to -people conversations at the university, at the company, at the state, at the province, and at the city level. And so we're really excited uh, to be able to expand that opportunity. We have a great consul general who's right back there. I guess he's not hiking. He looks, uh, but we really have um, you know, a depth of relationships that isn't just about one visit. But I, I'll, I'll end with this. We have a prime minister who has made Los Angeles a priority for the first time in a long time. And I think that speaks volumes about his heart, about his vision, both for his people and also what we'd like to see on this side of the border. And we'll continue giving a message of friendship instead of one of division. And, and, and a, Espan oh, go ahead. a quick follow-up, though. Yes. Um, but so there's no frustration, Mr. Prime Minister, that you have to do a public relations campaign for NAFTA in California with a president who may or may not be watching, uh, but who has uh, excoriated that trade agreement throughout the campaign and even says that uh, it may not be able to be re renegotiated. I, uh, you know, at, like Canadian prime ministers before me, and I talked about this last night, have always know that when it comes to Canada-U.S. relations, Canadians have to speak loudly and clearly and repeatedly to uh, remind folks of what uh, everyone in North America tends to take for granted, the closeness of the friendship, the uh, ease of the collaboration and cooperation across our two countries. So uh, in every era, uh, there's, a, there's a, a, a need to uh, talk about and uh, ensure that, that the friendship and the relationship is being uh, tended to and built on. Um, we know that renegotiating NAFTA uh, involves uh, a lot of different moving parts and is important to get right, uh, and that's why we've engaged in a spirit of compromise and uh, firmness at the same time and thoughtful engagement to ensure that we can move forward in a way that is, is, uh, is a win-win for all of us. We do not believe that trade deals uh, should be or even can be win-losses. They need to be win-win-wins. There is a clear path forward, uh, and we're working very hard together on that path. That's just a part of the responsibility of governing. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Merci. we got to hike. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Thank you.